On July 3rd, uh, 1971, uh, Jim Morrison died in Paris um, under what can only be called mysterious circumstances. We don't know what uh, what happened to Jim in Paris, and um, I don't think we're ever going to know what happened to Jim in Paris. And uh, the last time I saw Jim was uh, in the recording studio when we were doing uh, finishing up uh, the album L.A. Woman. And that's actually the last time uh, Jim Morrison was in a recording studio, the last time he ever sang, to my knowledge, uh, on planet Earth. Certainly the last time he ever sang with the Doors. But the last recording session, the last time Jim Morrison ever sang with the Doors was that haunted little whisper voice of uh, Riders on the Storm on the L.A. Woman album. And after he did that, he said, uh, I'm going to Paris. Great idea. Paris. Hemingway. Fitzgerald, American writers in Paris, an American in Paris, what could be better? And uh, unfortunately, uh, I never saw Jim Morrison again. He never came back from Paris. There are rumors, stories about Jim Morrison not being dead, but uh, I think they're just stories. I think Jim, uh, Jim is an immortal. I think Dionysus went back to Mount Olympus I think he's dwelling up there with the gods. And he's watching us down here. And he's laughing. You know, it's a keyboard band. I mean, it's a, there, there were three musicians, a drummer, a guitar player, and a guy playing keyboards, uh, playing bass, both bass and uh, lead lines and chords at the same time. We're waiting for Jim to come back. You know, we're working on some songs. John and Robbie and I are getting together, you know, every Tuesday and Thursday, a couple of hours in the afternoon, putting some little ditties together, working on some tunes, a little of this, a little of that, keeping the chops up, writing some songs. I had started writing some stuff. John was working on some songs himself, and we're taking this opportunity to do some woodshedding, as they call it, and work on some tunes and waiting for Jim to come back. And all of a sudden, assuming, of course, that Jim's coming back, all of a sudden Jim Morrison is not only is he not coming back, 
Jim Morrison is dead. Hey everybody, welcome to another Dumpster Dive video. And today I am tackling the second studio album that The Doors recorded, the three surviving Doors, recorded after Jim Morrison's death, Full Circle. Now, I could have very easily have chosen the first album that they recorded after Jim Morrison passed away, the album Jim Who. However, I felt that I'm only going to do one of these two albums. And the album that I believe sucks the most is Full Circle. Other voices suck balls to be sure, but not as much as Full Circle. So I had to pick between one or the other. Honestly, I could have done a video for either one, but I'm sticking with Full Circle. So after Jim Morrison passed away in 1971, The Doors, who had been working on some new studio material after the LA Woman sessions while Jim was in Paris, they had all these songs or fragments of songs or the beginnings of songs. And they're like, what do we do? And if there was ever a lead singer who was irreplaceable, who was so integral to the band, who captured the spirit of a band, a band you could never imagine moving on from, it would be The Doors. Jim Morrison was just iconic. He's one of the most iconic singers, not only of the 60s, but of all time. He basically was the face of the Doors, and not just because the other Doors were ugly, but because Jim Morrison, he captured that spirit, that dangerous spirit, that recklessness, the mysterious aura that he carried around him, his lyrics, his poetry, his voice just the way he carried himself, both on stage and off stage, there was no way that anyone was going to accept The Doors without Jim Morrison. But that being said, the remaining Doors basically had three options. Number one, break up. Now, that would have been the most sensible idea in retrospect. But that's not what they did. The second option would have been to Hire a new singer. But again, you're just not going to replace Jim Morrison. It's not fair to whatever singer you stick behind that microphone. He's never going to measure up to Jim Morrison. And the third option, the one that the Doors misguidedly chose, was we can sing, we can write songs, we're three quarters of the doors. Let's barrel on forward. The show must go on. Maybe one of the all-time worst career decisions in rock and roll history. But nonetheless, that is what the doors did. So they recorded the follow-up album to L.A. Woman later in the year 1971. The album called Jim Who. No, it wasn't called Jim Who. It was called Other Voices. Other Voices! Could have just as easily called it Shittier Voices. Voices that will have to do. Voices that up to this point weren't good enough to be on a Doors album. But anyway, they recorded that album. Did it suck? Pretty much. I mean, there's one or two songs on there that are okay. But the Doors, after Jim Morrison left, Jim Morrison kind of kept the doors in check, and he kind of kept the other doors in check. When Ray Manzarek and Robbie Krieger wanted to record some kind of goofball, lame, uninspired, half-assed kind of a song, Jim Morrison would be there to say, no, we're not doing that. I'm not singing those lyrics. We're not recording this song. And the, the other doors had to kind of rise to the level of Jim Morrison's expectations. And yeah, you can say, well, Jim Morrison recorded some shitty poetry, and Jim Morrison certainly was not perfect. Agreed. But compared to what we got on the two doors albums without Jim Morrison, even the weakest doors material on the first six albums is light years ahead of the shit that we got after he passed away. Now, I don't know 
this with any degree of certainty. I will never know. No one will ever know. But I highly doubt Jim Morrison would have ever put a vocal to a song called Variety is the Spice of Life. Or, I'm horny, I'm stone. Yeah, that's a real song title on the first Post Morrison Doors album. Nor would he have likely put his vocal on a piece of shit song called Get Up and Dance. Now, keep in mind, we're only about five years removed from The Doors' debut album, where you had masterpieces like Break On Through, Light My Fire, Crystal Ship, The End. And five years later, we have dog shit like Get Up and Dance. And people wonder why I don't take these Doors albums seriously. Why I would just as soon forget that they even exist. So anyway, Get Up and Dance is the lead off track to Full Circle. And it is every bit as bad and as embarrassing as the title would suggest. And here's the problem. I do not like Ray Manzarek's voice, and Robbie Krieger's voice isn't good either. So when you have those two below average singers on every single song, at least the songs that aren't instrumentals, yeah, it doesn't bode well for the album. Now, Ray Manzarek has taken vocals before. When Jim Morrison would get intoxicated or out of his mind or couldn't function on stage or pass out, whatever, Ray Manzarek would take a vocal or two. And there's even a vocal close to you, which is on one of the Doors Live's album. It might be on Absolutely Live, I think so. That's all you need to know. Close to you, Ray Manzarek trying to sound like Jim Morrison and failing badly. Ray Manzarek is not a vocalist. And just the fact that he was in the band doesn't mean he should be opening his mouth and singing. All these vocals sound like guide vocals. They don't sound professional. Because Ray Manzarek's not a professional singer. Is he better than Yoko Ono? Yes, but that's not the bar that you want to use to measure yourself if you're a goddamn lead singer of a rock and roll band. The lyrics of this song were written by Robbie Krieger and Ray Manzarek, and they are terrible. The basic idea is if everybody gets up and dance, the world will be a better place. It just shows you how uninspired this song is that the only rhyme they can think of to go with dance is chance, which is the most tired and cliched rhyme in the history of rock and roll. No need to hurry, but no time to waste. The year 2000 is the time of hate. What does that even mean? What has he got against the millennium? The future's ours if we just take a chance. It's got to be the most eye-rolling lyric the Doors have ever written. So anyway, Get Up and Dance leads off the album. The next song is Four Billion Souls. And if you thought Get Up and Dance was a piece of garbage song, Four Billion Souls is even worse. It was written and it's sung by Robbie Krieger. And it's hard for me to reconcile that the guy who wrote lyrics to Light My Fire and Love Me Two Times wrote this piece of shit song. One, two, three, four billion souls are gone to rest. If all our friends don't try their best to change the way this world is headed for. And yeah, he was never as strong a songwriter as Jim Morrison was. He did write Tell All the People for Crying Out Loud, but... These have got to be the worst lyrics he ever wrote. One, two, three, four billion souls are going to rest if all our friends don't try their best. Leaving all that we don't need behind, we could clean it up and make it shine. And he's watching us down here, and he's laughing. The arrangement is pedestrian. His singing is substandard. It's just a mess of a song. The next song is Vertilac, which is a bit of Miles Davis electric jazz. And I mean, I guess if you like that kind of thing, it's all right. 
I mean, I'll give it this. It's an interesting piece of music. It's like nothing else the Doors had ever recorded to this point. So I'm not going to crap on this song. It's a piece of modern jazz, I suppose. And at least Ray and Robbie aren't singing on it. There's not terrible lyrics because it's an instrumental. So this song, I'm going to give a pass to. The next track is Hardwood Floor, and it is an abomination. Again, the lyrics were written by Robbie Krieger, and it tells a story of a couple who are just starting out. They don't have any money. They don't even have carpet or a rug on their floor. That's about as deep as the song gets, but the way he butchers the lyrics, and I've decided the problem with these lyrics is that Robbie Krieger is writing the rhyme before he's actually writing the lines of the song. Well, I had a lot of money about a year ago, spent all my money on a rock and roll show. How much was that goddamn concert? It was 1971. Concerts were not that expensive. So either you were very poor or you did a lot of cocaine, a lot of drugs at that particular rock and roll show. I don't know. Well, I went to see your daddy, but he sure got sore. He said you ought to be out there fighting the war. What war? The Vietnam War? To the best of my recollection, women were not fighting the Vietnam War. So that line, it doesn't even make sense. And he's watching us down here. And he's laughing. And he uses the same rhyme two lines in a row. Spent all my money on a rock and roll show. I got a lot to tell. Ain't got nothing to show. That's just lazy. For Christ's sake, Robbie Krieger, you're a member of the Doors. You're not fucking Paul Williams. The arrangement is awful. It sounded dated the day it was recorded. I have to move on from this song because I hate it so much. The next song is... A three-way composition by Densmore, Krieger, and Manzarek. It's called The Mosquito, and I wish I were making this up. Robbie Krieger sings it. The lyrics are in Spanish, and I swear to God, he rhymes mosquito with burrito. No me moleste mosquito, just let me eat my burrito. No me moleste mosquito, why don't you go home? And he's watching us down here and he's laughing this song was actually a hit in parts of the world which absolutely blows my mind this song is so depressing to hear that this is the state of one of the greatest bands of the 1960s this is the best they could come up with in 1972 I don't even want to call this a novelty song because that's an insult to novelty songs. I have no idea what they were going for here, but it's an embarrassment. The next song was co-written by John Densmore and Jack Conrad. And yeah, when you have John Densmore writing a song, the songwriting well is pretty dry. Musically, I don't care for it. It sounds like a bit of Latin jazz. Ray Manzarek is giving it his hammiest vocal. Nothing about this song works for me. The next song is It Slipped My Mind. And musically, this sounds the closest to any of the classic Doors music that we got during the Jim Morrison era. Until the vocals kick in, until the lyrics reveal themselves and then it just turns into another pedestrian substandard song again robbie krieger wrote the lyrics didn't try very hard he rhymes soon with moon for crying out loud this song is the dumbing down of the doors the last song is the peking king and the new york queen and it is written by ray manzarek it's over six minutes long, and no, it does not justify its length. I don't know if they were trying to come up with an epic closing track like The Doors were known for, but this sounds, again, so dated. Rayman's Eric's playing attack piano, but it is so far removed from You Make Me Real. It's almost like they're different bands. Having to sit through Ray Manzarek singing for six minutes straight is borderline intolerable. I hate this song. 
I hate this album. I hate that this is part of The Doors' legacy. So anyway, let me know. Am I being too harsh? Maybe I am. I don't know. I don't think I am, but you be the judge. Let me know in the comment section. If you've heard this album, what do you think of it? Hope you're enjoying this series and take care.